Hello everyone, my name is Sam Hine and this is episode 2 of League of Legends Analytics Academy. Today we're going to be talking about data, namely its collection, how to store it, and where you can find certain data pieces from certain data sources. As a new analyst, it can be pretty hard to figure out where certain data is held. For example, how do you find out about your scrim data? How do you find out about other teams' competitive data? So hopefully this video will clear that up. And also I'm going to talk a little bit about my thoughts on new data coming to the scene and how that will affect things coming up, as well as some of the things that that new data will allow us to do. So there's a lot to cover. Let's get started. Before I get started talking about how to collect data, where to find certain data pieces, I think it's first important to make a case about how important data is about to be, or already is in fact. So as many people may not know, it's now possible for competitive teams in ERLs upwards, so that's LEC, LCS, and all ERLs within Europe, as well as I think the American Amateur Leagues as well, and I'm sure across the rest of the world, it's now possible to access second by second data for scrims and competitive games. So the reason this is important is but previously you could only access minute by minute data, so the granularity of data has increased by 60 fold. Um, so some of the calculations that you can do previously for things like jungle pathing, support jungle proximity, warding heat maps, etc. Um, are now possible. And you can do this for your scrims and for scouting. Um, when I found out about this, it was pretty impactful to the work that I'll be doing within my team. And I think anyone not realizing how important that data is to teams and especially the scouting effort um, needs to open their eyes, essentially. Uh, so, yeah, as mentioned, you can do a lot of things with this data, things like automating jungle pathing rather than having a scouting analyst have to watch VODs, um, things like warding patterns without having to do the previous as well, and um, basically anything a scouting analyst had to spend time watching a VOD doing is now possible through League of Legends data analytics. Um, so it's very exciting for data analysts and it's also exciting for scouting analysts because they have more time to focus on patterns that perhaps are harder for data analysts to figure out. Although there is a case to be made that in the future um, it might be possible to have some sort of machine learning uh, or data inference, which is perhaps the term I would prefer to use rather than machine learning, um, since I don't think the volume of data actually lends itself to machine learning very well. Another thing to mention is that the speed, of course, increases of stuff like scouting and scrim tracking. Data analysts can spend more time uh, developing tools to work on this uh, more dense amount of data rather than spending time trying to manually do things which weren't previously which weren't previously possible. So now I've covered a little bit about why I think data is important and also why you should too. Uh, I'm going to go over some of the data sources I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I'm also going to cover what I use these data sources for and also some tools which you can use to get started with these data sources. So for the first of those things, the four data sources I use on my day-to-day -day is the right API and Data Dragon. Those are sort of tied together. Bayes, Leaguepedia and LolPros. So the right API is pretty obvious in its functionality. I think most people know what it does at this point. Um, it's used for solo queue data and pretty much that exclusively at this point. And the reason why Data Dragon is tied alongside that is because they interact with the same sort of ID system. Um, and Data Dragon holds information about champions, items, abilities, and all of that sort of uh, wiki metadata um, to do with actual values rather than um, things that are generated from the games themselves. Uh, Bayes is something that teams are becoming more and more familiar with as time goes on. This is the data source that sort of caused shockwaves um, at the beginning of last split and this is the second by second historic and scrim data. So it's worth bearing in mind that teams can only see their own scrims, however they can see competitive data from every single league um, second by second. Leapedia is something that most people are familiar with. Leapedia tracks uh, competitive metadata, so tournament results, um, player rosters sometimes, and basic things like drafts and a lot of the stuff that happens outside the game but still related to the game itself. Um, so that's pretty useful for grabbing drafts, champions play and things like that. And my last day source that I use, which I don't think many people make use of, is LolPros. So LolPros actually has an externally facing API, which you can query teams with, find out which players are on that team, and then find players solo queue smurfs, uh, all automatically, so I don't need to spend time, you know, 
uh, browsing their UI, typing names in manually, I can basically set a script off to do it all for me. And that's really nice to do, and I'm glad they have that external API available to us. So I mentioned last video about the three phases of analytics work, these being scouting, scrim tracking, and meta-analysis. So I thought it would be helpful to sort of categorize the four data sources I use into these three phases um, to sort of see which areas touch which. So starting with scouting, um, the sort of data sources that will be useful for you are basically all four of the above. And I'll give examples as to why that is. So for Bayes, obviously second by second data on games that the enemy team has played is going to be crucial in finding things like jungling habits, warding patterns, um, and other things to do with what happens on the rift itself. Leakpedia is useful in automatically grabbing any drafts that they've played, finding out pick orders, finding out blinds they, put, they pick usually, and champions they play at a base level. Um, the RAR API can be useful in finding solo queue data, although that's usually not used so much now that we have stuff like this um, wealth of competitive data. And LOL Pros, of course, to find the smurfs of each of the players so you make sure that your solo queue scouting has the breadth um, that you require. Onto scrims, so scrims um, on TR, it wasn't actually possible to grab any TR data before unless you had some sort of client magic that you were running. Um, so currently, Bayes is basically the only source of scrim data. Um, it used to be possible to use the right API to track custom games, although that functionality was revoked um, very recently, actually, about last month, um, which is a bit of a shame, but uh, everyone in ERLs and higher doesn't really mind because we now have Bayes, which is a much better alternative. As far as meta goes, of course, again, Bayes, uh, common to all three categories. Um, you're able to see games from every other region to a second by second granularity, apart from LPL, I believe. Um, and that's really useful in viewing not only patterns of your enemies, not only patterns of other teams in your league, but of course, patterns across the globe. What are people in the LCS doing? What are people in the LCK doing? And how can we learn from that um, in sort of a data inferred way? Of course, Leapedia, in a very similar vein, you had access to um, foreign drafts, um, things like pick orders, pick priorities, common blinds, etc., things like that. And the right API, crucial in solo queue meta. So, what champions are strong, how to do certain matchups perform, what item builds are popular, and everything basically that you'd find on websites like u.gg and champion.gg, all of those sorts of meta analytics. So there's a way to flip this, um, and the other way to look at it is from the sources of the data themselves. So um, what are these things used for? And I've mentioned a few previously, but also um, what tools can you use to make sure that you're using these data sources to the best of your ability? If you're looking across those data sources and finding it to be a little bit overwhelming, then let me put your mind at ease. Um, a lot of work has been done by a lot of different people to make these data sources as readable as possible um, and make it so that you can find the data you need as fast as possible. Um, something to mention is that it is possible to look through all these data sources within your browser, for example, um, copy the data down manually and come to conclusions uh, on your own that you can present to the coach and players. However, the far superior way is to learn how to code. And through the magic of coding, you can do all of that automatically in seconds. So uh, the usual workflow for a data analyst would be to query these data sources, return a JSON response, fiddle around with that JSON response to extract the data that you need, and then push that out to a graph or even a table in something like Google Sheets, and then present that to the players or the coach, um, which then helps them in their scouting efforts and ultimately on the Rift. Um, as a side note, I code in Python. Um, it's pretty easy to get started with. There's a lot of support for all of the data sources um, that I've mentioned, and it's usually the main tool used by the majority of league analysts from what I can tell. Um, it's also used in a professional sense for a lot of data analytics, not only inside of esports, but across disciplines. And um, it would definitely be my recommendation if you wanted to get started with coding and League of Legends analytics. So let's first start off with the right API. Of course, solo queue win rates on certain champions, um, as well as for a certain individual, you might want to look at their solo queue behavior. So it is possible across multiple games to figure out, you know, where they prefer to usually gank on a certain champion, um, what sort of matchups they like to play into, whether they usually win or lose certain matchups and things like that. 
and as previously mentioned meta analytics um, things like what champions are strong what champions aren't and again matchups build paths etc so there's a wealth of tools for basically every single programming language um, all these tools are going to be based on the assumption that you know how to code um, of course the quickest way to analyze these data sets is through code rather than you know manually shifting through it yourself in an excel sheet etc um, but just to give some examples i code in python all these tools are going to be python written so tools with the right api popular ones are cassiopeia and Writewatcher, and i also have my own tool i've developed which is open source called blitzcrank the base api uh, useful for scrim tracking, competitive tracking, um, things like behaviors, drafts. You can also get in uh, Bayes API, but usually I'd rely on Leapedia. It's a little bit more consistent. Um, level one patterns, basically anything you as an analyst can think of to scout enemy teams or to make sure that your teams are doing what they should in games. And again, meta analytics for the same reasons I mentioned previously. Tools for the Bayes API is essentially just crickets. Um, at this point in time, no one's really willing to share the tools that they've made for the Bayes API, mostly because rather than providing for the community, you're essentially just giving an edge to your competitors. So I assume a lot of data analysts within the scene, um, I know a few within Europe that do, have built their own tools from the ground up, um, and essentially sharing them would put them at a competitive disadvantage. So I wouldn't expect to see many tools for the Bayes API coming out anytime soon. Leapedia, as previously mentioned, good for competitive tracking, things like match results, drafts, and who played where, uh, who played what, and how that match went. And tools for those are Leapedia Parser, and also the WW Client plus Cargo, which might sound like hieroglyphics, but if you Google those things, you'll find tools which will help you write um, queries for the Leapedia API in Python. The last one is the Log Pros API, where you can buy player smurfs as well as historic LP, which might be something that you're interested in if you're thinking about tracking your player's progress throughout the split. And they have a pretty basic API. Uh, there's no tools written for them at, at the moment, although I'm thinking of doing one. It's a pretty simple API, and if you know how to write REST requests, then you'd be totally fine using this from the ground up. So once you've managed to wrangle all these tools uh, from all these data sources and actually grab the data that you need, the uh, obvious question is what do you do with it? And this is where the core skill um, of an analyst comes in, not only within the sense of esports, but also in the wider world. You have to sort of figure out what parts of this data that you've retrieved you want. Um, what parts are important, what parts might not be. Dilute that data effectively by filtering, um, only grabbing certain rows or columns if you think about it in a table, and then making sure that you can morph that data into something as useful as possible. So this is a skill that you develop over time. It's something that isn't gonna come to you overnight. You may have an idea, um, which will always helpful, and then you kind of follow that idea through um, with the data you need to try and come to a conclusion. Um, there's not too much in the ways of advice that I can give for this other than um, do it over and over and over again. Um, once you find something which does yield useful results, the advantage um, of coding is that you can run that again and again and again, and it will always yield useful results. For example, in the context of, let's say, um, jungle sport proximity, if I figured out a workflow which grabs data from the correct data source, it runs all the way through to my code and my code dilutes that data, filters it and grabs the data I need, puts it into a pretty graph and then I can copy and paste that graph into Google Sheets where I automatically push it to Google Sheets through something like Gspread, um, then that workflow is done for me. I can do that ad infinum um, as many times as I like and I can now move on to something else which will be helpful to develop for the team. And that's usually the workflow that I stick with. I'll develop a tool, I'll make sure that, that tool is in use within team scouting or things like scrim tracking, and I'll move on to another tool which will add to not only my own toolbox, but also um, the richness of data that I provide for coaches and players before their match and after scrims. So that's about it for this episode of Analytics Academy. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I apologize if it's slightly technical in the way of um, programming detail or data detail, um, but essentially I view this as the area which is going to grow fastest in the coming months or um, the coming splits for League of Legends analytics. I think a lot of the stuff you'll see, for instance, on Twitter and sort of summary analytics is going to be data based. And um, you're going to see a lot more pretty graphs um, that people have made from, you know, the higher granularity of data. And, um, and yeah, I think it's 
definitely important for every team to have a data analyst, um, not in a biased way, but in a way that um, if you want to make use of all the data that's provided to you as a team, which is something that people do in stuff like basketball and baseball and especially American sports, then it will be more than sensible to add a data analyst to the roster in your coaching staff. And you can see this as an example, most LEC teams now, most LCS teams now, and I imagine most LCK teams now, etc., all have data analysts on their roster because they realize how important um, data is to provide an edge over the enemy. Um, if you have better granularity of your data, if you're diluting your data in a better way, then of course that's going to provide you with an advantage over people who perhaps aren't doing that, um, which I think is becoming more and more realized as splits go on. If you have any questions about anything I've said in this video, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter and of course feel free to join our Resolve Community Discord, uh, the links of which you'll find in the description below. Um, I hope you have a nice day and thanks for watching.